All right, I want to run through some different examples of some of the derivatives ty uh, derivative types of problems you might see on the free response part of the AP exam. Uh, you need to know how to find derivatives, okay? You know, make sure you've memorized all your trig derivatives, make sure you've memorized, you know, natural log, inverse trig functions, you know, make sure you know how to find different specific derivatives. But most of those are going to happen within application problems, okay? You're probably not on a free response question just going to be handed a, 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 an equation and asked to find the derivative. What they will ask you to do is ask you to do different reasoning about derivatives. So let's, let's look at a few examples. Here's the typical type of thing they'll do. They like doing multiple representations of things. Yes, you'll have equations sometimes, but they'll also give you tables that have specific values. Most of them have nothing to do with the problem. A couple of them can be used and maybe they'll give you a picture of a graph. So here we have some information about function f at different values of x and the derivative of f at different values of x. Uh, we have the graph of a function g over here, okay? And a lot of times they're gonna combine, they're gonna combine those together in some kind of way. They're gonna add them, they're gonna multiply them, they're gonna divide them, and they're gonna see, do you know how to apply your derivative rules, okay? And these questions are almost always gonna play off things like the product rule and the quotient rule, and the chain rule. Do you understand the basic concepts of calculus? All right, so this question here makes up a new function, calls it function h, it says it's the product of f and g, okay? I am not gonna be able to look at this table and look at that graph and, and figure out what that function is gonna look like. I'm not gonna be able to figure out that function's equation. What they want you to do is to apply the general process of taking the derivative here and then go to the table and see what you can do, okay? This is a product of two different values, okay? So if I want to find h prime, h prime is going to require me to take to use the product rule because I have a product of two different functions, okay? Product rule says I take the derivative of the first and I multiply by the second, okay? Plus the first times the derivative of the second, okay? That's the derivative. Then, they want me to find h of 3. So I'm going to put 3 back in for my function here. So f prime of 3, g of 3. And by the way, really, you should make this a separate line in your work. That way, you'll get a credit for the derivative. You'll probably get a credit for uh, the step where you actually evaluate it. But uh, anyway, in this particular case, and you should be able to go to the chart in the graph. So f prime of 3, when x is 3, f prime is 4, OK? g of 3. Uh, we go over here, that's the point 3, 4 on graph G, so uh, G of 3 is 4, okay? Plus F of 3, go back to the table here, the function value is negative 2 uh, when X is 3. And then finally G prime of 3. Um, remember that the derivative of a graph is really the slope, okay? So if they give you something like, you know, a half circle and they want the derivative right there, you know, the derivative is going to be zero. If they give you a straight line, you should be able to just use algebra one and find the slope, okay? So the slope in this case, uh, this is the point zero, 10. Uh, the slope here would be 10 minus four, change in y over the change in x. 10 minus four over zero minus three, uh, what is that, six over negative three, it looks like a slope of negative two, okay? So we have negative two times negative two. We can work that out, that's 16. Uh, looks like it's gonna be plus four. Looks like this result's gonna be 20 would be my value of h prime of, of three if I did all the arithmetic right there, okay? But again, that's very simple in comparison to most things that you'd be doing in a college class where they give you some complicated function, you've got this big long derivative and you've gotta evaluate it. Um, a lot of very basic steps in there. It just doesn't look like something you see in a calculus textbook, okay? And again, these are very AP specific types of problems and we need to be ready for them, but they do come up, okay? Now, what are, what are some other things they could ask? Well, uh, other examples here. Let's just look at a few. Uh, they could say something like they're defining a function h of x, which is f of x squared times g of x, okay? And again, it's a product rule. You need to apply the product rule. So derivative of the first, now be careful here. Uh, the derivative of the first term in this case, think about how you take a derivative. If I had sine of 2x, sine is the outside function, 2x is the inside function, okay? You would take the derivative of sine, you would take the derivative of the outside function. Same thing here, derivative of the outside function, it's just f prime, okay? If I was taking the derivative of sine of 2x, it would be cosine of 2x, inside function doesn't change. So same thing here, your inside function doesn't change, 
but the chain rule says I have to multiply by the derivative of the inside function. So take the derivative of the outside, inside function doesn't change, then multiply by the derivative of the inside function. Okay, so that's the derivative of my first term times the second, plus the first term times the derivative of the second. And uh, again, the derivative of the inside function there is one, so we don't need to do anything with that. Uh, now, if they wanted me to find uh, h prime of two, I'm not gonna go all the way through here, but if I wanted to find h prime of two, I'd sub in two here, two squared is four. I'd be finding f prime of four, okay? That's not my table, so they wouldn't ask you to do that. Uh, two times two would give you another four, okay? G of two, you could go find the functional value of g here. You'd have to find the equation of that line or use the slope to find that point there, okay? Two squared is four, another f of four, which again is not my table, and g prime of two, uh, which would be the slope at two, which would actually be the same as the slope right here. So the point is, yeah, you just apply your derivative rules like normal and uh, it should match up with what they give you, okay? Uh, if they ask you to find the derivative of, um, they could combine a function and one of these functions. They could do something like uh, k of x is equal to the natural log of x uh, times f of 3x, okay? Something, something like that, all right? And, uh, you know, they might say, okay, fine, find the derivative of this. And you would say, well, all right, it's a product of two different functions. So product rule says take the derivative of the first, one over x, times the second, plus the first times the derivative of the second. Now be careful, derivative of the second, take the derivative of the outside function, that's gonna be f prime. Inside function doesn't change, but you're gonna multiply by the derivative of the inside function, which is three. And you know, you might wanna roll that three out front. That would be your derivative. Um, if they ask you to find something like k prime of one, you would substitute one in everywhere. So one over one would be one, uh, that would be f of three, so one times f of three, uh, plus ln of one. Remember the natural log function, you take e to the first power, you get, I'm sorry, e to the zero power, you get one. Natural log of one is zero. So it's gonna be zero times uh, f prime of three multiplied by three, and probably don't even need to find that because of the zero. But uh, anyway, that's, that's the basic idea there. And then you, you could work that out, okay? Uh, they could ask you the quotient rule. Okay, they could give you, uh, you know, something like k of x is equal to f of x over g of 2x, something like that. Remember the, the quotient rule says you take the derivative of the top times the bottom, minus the top times the derivative of the bottom, that would be g prime of 2x, and then you have to multiply by the derivative of the inside function, so multiply by two. And remember, it's all over the denominator squared, so it'd be g of 2x, and that whole thing would be squared. And then again, they might ask you to evaluate it to value, and you can stick numbers in, and you can figure out what everything is, okay? So those are the different types of things you're gonna see. Oh, one other thing. Um, I got a lot of uh, questions from people about composite functions, and uh, we need to be real careful here. Uh, they expect that you were real good at Algebra 2 and real good at Pre-Cal, and so they expect that you're comfortable working with composite functions, which is a big uh, topic in Algebra 2 that probably comes up again from time to time in Pre-Cal. Uh, so remember, composite function notation, you're putting one function into another, okay? What do we really have here? We, we have an inside function. You're taking the derivative. You're going to have to apply the chain rule here. Okay, so if you're gonna take the derivative of this function, um, again, if, if you're not sure, pick another function that has a, an inside function. Pick something like sine of 2x, and think about how you find the derivative. You take the derivative of the outside, you don't change the inside, and then you multiply by the derivative of the inside function, okay? Same thing here. Take the derivative of the outside function, g prime, don't change the inside function, okay? and then you're gonna multiply by the derivative of the inside function, okay? And if they ask you to evaluate this, let's say they ask you to find h prime of five, okay? You're gonna be taking g prime of f of five, and you're gonna be taking f prime of five, all right? And 
be careful here. This is not a product. We're not multiplying g prime times f. This is g prime of f, okay? This is sort of operations. I say it's algebra two, it's really algebra one. You got an inside function. Find f of five first, okay? And uh, I'm not exactly sure what f of five is. Let's see, the slope is two, right? So it goes down two and then over one. Uh, that would be the point uh, four, two. It'll go down two and then over another one. I think it would actually cross the axis at five. I think that's gonna be the point five, zero. We'll go with that. Uh, so f of five is zero, okay? That evaluates two, zero. Now you're taking g prime of zero, okay? g prime of zero is the slope at zero, which is uh, the slope of that whole thing, which is negative two. And then you're multiplying by the derivative of f at five, uh, which was equal to seven, and it looks like we get negative 14 here. So make sure you can apply the idea of composite functions as well. You might see a function inside another function. All right, so I think that hits most of the high points there. Um, oh, let me, let me just toss one more thing in here. Integrals, okay? I don't think it'll technically be reviewed in this section um, in progress checks, but you know, why not talk about it? If they ask you to take the integral from, uh, let's say, three to five of f prime of x dx, okay? Uh, again, you should love it if they give you something like this. Uh, because they're just asking if you know the fundamental theorem. You don't actually have to find any derivatives. It's so much easier than anything you'll ever be asked to do in college. Um, anyway, point here is uh, fundamental theorem says you take the antiderivative. Well, what did they take the derivative of to get f prime? f, okay? So you take the antiderivative and you evaluate the antiderivative between those two points and you subtract. So the antiderivative of f prime is just f. Uh, we're going to take f of 5, and we're going to subtract f of 3, and you can see up here in the table, uh, f of 5 is 3, okay? f of 3 is negative 2, okay? 3 minus negative 2 is equal to 5. That would be your final integral, okay? Now, they can, they can do other stuff with this. Uh, they could have said, find the integral from 3 to 5 of f double prime of x, okay? What do you think they took the derivative of to get f double prime? You're right, they took the derivative of f prime, okay? So you'd have f prime of x, the antiderivative, uh, or the integral, if you want to think about that, uh, evaluated between five and three, okay? So f prime of five is seven. F prime of three is four. Seven minus four is equal to three, and you've got your answer there, okay? Now, are they always gonna be that easy with it? Heck no, okay? They want to know if you understand the, uh, the chain rule, for example. So they might ask you to find the integral from uh, 0 to 5 of, maybe they would do something like f prime of 2x dx, something like that. Okay, and you've got to recognize, oh, there's a derivative of the inside function. When I take the antiderivative, I've got to get rid of the derivative of, inside, of the inside function, which is 2. Oh, they didn't give me a 2 out here. Okay, well, I need two, right? I don't have a two, so I'm gonna multiply my equation by two. If I just doubled my equation, then I'm going to have to offset it by dividing by two or, or taking half of the function. Uh, that's a constant. You can always divide a constant out of a derivative or integral, okay? Uh, now, you reverse the chain rule. Derivative of the inside function goes away. What's the antiderivative of f? Well, it would be, uh, of f prime, uh, it would be f okay, of the inside function, okay? But we've got that one half out in front, and then you're gonna be evaluating this between zero and five. And so in this case, uh, we'd be taking half of f of 10, when you substitute that back in, minus half of f of zero, when you take two times zero. Now, I don't have an f of 10 in this chart, so I can't actually evaluate it, uh, but you might see that kind of thing as well. So again, um, much easier than having to know a bunch of fancy derivative rules. Uh, they're just saying, do you know the basics or not? So I really like these problems. Uh, you should be hoping they put this kind of thing on the AP exam.